Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R330 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on iDRAC. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R330 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's hop into it. Uh, this video is going to be uh, sp specifically focused on iDRAC. If you're not familiar with iDRAC, uh, it's a wonderful feature that uh, Dell has that uh, provides remote access. In this case, it truly is a remote access card. On most uh, systems, or at least most uh, 13th gen systems, it is a, a built-in software uh, onto the motherboard itself, or really I should say a built-in chip on the motherboard itself. Um, whereas with the 330, that's one of the big differences is that it is an actual card that you need to make sure that you have installed in the back, okay? So we'll show you how to install that here in just a second. The other thing is, is that uh, we're gonna show you how to identify what type of license do you have? Do you have an Express or do you have an Enterprise? Enterprise is really what you need to be able to do uh, the true remote access. So that's one of the things that uh, we'll show you how to do is how to upgrade from uh, Express to Enterprise. We're gonna show you step-by-step -step instructions. And after you do that, we're gonna show you how to log in to the uh, iDRAC web interface uh, to be able to uh, access everything. So, all right, let's hop in, let's get going. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install our iDRAC card. Uh, one of the things I did want to uh, point out, you're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver, um, and really that's about it, so let's go ahead and hop in. So um, first things first, just make sure your latch is set to unlock. Pop the top, very simple. All right, we're gonna remove our air baffle just to have a little bit of extra space. So when you install this, you're gonna wanna make sure that you um, push the actual uh, interfaces here through the hole that way that you can line up the screw holes properly so you're going to want to kind of push this down and then uh, or push this in and then come down okay so we're going to go ahead and I'll show you what I'm talking about here so we're going to line this up and then we're going to come straight down okay so again line it up kind of have it pushed in there and then straight down and you'll notice when you have it done properly the screw hole lines up perfectly where we can go ahead and just uh, insert our screw and lock this into place. So we're gonna go ahead and do our screw. And really it's just that easy of an install. So again, the only uh, takeaways I would say uh, is that, could, that, that someone could run into a problem, just make sure you kind of push it in a little bit this way before you come down uh, to make sure that you have it all the way inserted so that you can line up the screw holes. That's the only potential problem that I could see somebody having. Other than that, it's a, a really easy install and that's all you have to do. So now what we'll do is we're gonna show you how to actually identify what type of license do you have. Do you have uh, Express or do you have an Enterprise? And then we'll show you how to actually upgrade from Express to Enterprise. How's it going everybody? This has been the Cloud Ninjas and today I'm going to be showing you how to upgrade your iDRAC Express license to an Enterprise license. So before we get started, there's going to be a few things that we're going to need. Firstly, we want to have our server obviously. We also will need a desktop or a laptop and we're going to use this later so we can get into the iDRAC web interface. And then the last thing we're going to need is a iDRAC Enterprise XML file. And this is the file we're going to be able to upload later into the iDRAC web interface um, so we can actually upgrade our license. So now that we have everything that we need, we're going to need to connect our server to the same network as our laptop or desktop uh, via the iDRAC port on the back of our server. All you got to do is use some Ethernet cable, plug it into the iDRAC port on the back of your server, and use this to connect it to your network. Uh, you can either do this through a direct connection, or you could do it through a switch, or however you want to do it. All you got to do is connect that iDRAC port to the same network as our laptop or desktop. So now we're ready to go ahead and get started with the rest of the video, but first I'm going to go ahead and show you how to identify what iDRAC license you have. All right, so what you want to do is boot up your server, and the first thing you want to do is press F2 uh, during post, and then you'll go into system setup. Inside of system setup, you want to go ahead and click on iDRAC settings. In iDRAC settings, we want to go ahead and click on system summary right here. And inside of system summary, you can see right here where it says iDRAC license, we have an express license. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to upgrade this express license to an enterprise license. 
So the first step of this process is setting our iDRAC IP address. This can be done via DHCP or statically, uh, but in this video we're going to go ahead and set a static IP address. This is going to be important for later in the video when we connect to the iDRAC web interface so we have an IP address that we can put into our web browser and we can access that web interface. So what we want to do is go back into System Setup and click on iDRAC Settings. And in iDRAC Settings, go to Network and scroll all the way down to where it says IPv4 Settings. So like I said, we can do it either via DHCP or statically, uh, but if you want to do it statically, make sure that IPv4 is enabled and then DHCP is disabled. And if you want to do DHCP, enable DHCP and it will automatically set that IP address for you. So since we are doing this statically, we want to go ahead and type in the IP address of our choice. But it is very important that the first three octets of this IP address are the same three first octets that we have um, for our network. A good way to check what this is is go, to your, go find your router's IP address, uh, find the first three octets on that and have that be the exact same. Next we want to actually put in the static gateway, which this is going to be the IP address of our router. So depending on what the IP address of your router, this may look a little bit different. And then the static subnet mask, this may also be a little bit different depending on what it is for your network. Uh, but you can easily find this if you go to a laptop and your uh, network and type in ipconfig into the command line. And then if you scroll down enough, you'll be able to find the subnet mask. But generally in most networks, it's going to be this 255, 255, 2550. Now we're going to put in a DNS server IP address. Um, if you have your own DNS server, you can go ahead and use this. But in here, we're going to use Google's primary and secondary uh, DNS server IP. So once we've gotten that, you can go ahead and back out. Then we can press finish and then save our changes. So these next set of steps, they may be optional depending on your situation. If your laptop or desktop is already connected to the network, then you will not have to do this. But if it's not connected to the network, then you can go ahead and follow these steps as shown. What we're going to be doing is setting an, a static IP address on our system so we can put it in the same network as our server. This set of steps may look a little bit different depending on what operating system you have. If you have a Linux or a Mac, um, it's going to look different, but conceptually it's going to be the same thing. So you may just want to do a little bit more research to figure out how to access your systems or your operating systems network settings, and then going in and setting either a static or a DHCP IP address. If you have a Windows system, you can go ahead and just follow along as is. But first, you want to go ahead and open up your control panel. And once you're in control panel, you can go ahead and click on network and sharing center. Right here, you want to go to the left side and click on change adapter settings. Going to click on ethernet. Assuming that your laptop is connected via ethernet, if it's connected wirelessly, then you can go ahead and click on Wi-Fi. You want to go right click on it and press properties and go down to internet protocol version 4. Click on that and then click on use the following IP address. And then this is whenever we can enter in an IP address of our choice. So just like the iDRAC IP address that we entered in earlier, you want those first three octets to be the same as your network's router. This is basically saying that, hey, these two devices are in the same network as each other. And then that last octet is almost like an identifier to the device in the network. Um, so this can be whatever you want it to be, but just make sure that the number you pick here um, isn't already used by another device's IP address. Now we're going to go ahead and put in the same subnet mask that we put on the iDRAC. We're going to go ahead and put 255, 255, 2550. And like I said, this may not be exactly the same, uh, but do the little trick I taught you earlier so you can go ahead and find the subnet mask for your network. And then lastly, for the default gateway, go ahead and put in the IP address of your router. And then as you can see right here, we already have our DNS server IP addresses inserted into here. And they're the exact same as what we have on our iDRAC. So we can go ahead and leave that as is. 
And then once we are done, we can go ahead and press OK. So now go ahead and navigate to any web browser of your choice. And then at the search bar, go ahead and enter the IP address that we set for our iDRAC. This is going to allow us to access the iDRAC web interface. You may get a security or certificate error, uh, but go ahead and just continue as is. And then on the login screen, for the username, you want to go ahead and enter in root. And then for the password, Calvin. Once you have that inserted in, press submit. On this screen, it's going to ask you to change the default password. I recommend doing this for security purposes, but for this video, we're going to go ahead and just keep it as the default. And then we can just press on continue. So since we are now in the iDrive web interface, go ahead and press the license tab on the left side of the screen. And then you want to click on license options and click on the drop down and then press import. Then click on choose file. Pressing this will bring us to our file explorer. So go ahead and find that XML file and then press on open and then apply. And then we can just press OK. And we're going to go ahead and log out and log back in. So at the very top of the screen, you can see that it does say Enterprise. So this upgrade has successfully worked. And that is how you upgrade your iDRAC Express license to an Enterprise license. If you found this video, go ahead, leave a like and smash the subscribe. And if you're interested in purchasing a custom configured server, whether that's Dell, HPE, Supermicro, or Cisco, or whatever it may be, go ahead and email sales at cloudninjas.com, sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, have a great day.